Hey everybody, time for a movie retrospective once again. This is the one everybody voted for again. Again, this one won by just one vote. Yeah, this is an old classic here. <laughs> I love this movie. This you was know, early 90s or was it? 89. 89. 89. Okay. Bitches, I didn't even have to re-watch this one for the show. I would have. Yeah. You but I just, I just watched one. it a couple uh, weeks ago. I saw it, yeah. So, um, so I was like, I don't even have to because I think I have this movie fucking memorized because I've seen it so many times. This is the 1989 Black comedy Heather's. I remember we used to. I used to rent this. I think I rented it two or three times on VHS back in the day when it was still kind of new. But I don't really think I saw it till like maybe 1990. Yeah, well, that's, that's only a first, year after it came out. Yeah, I think that's when I saw it. I'm pretty it sure. I'm pretty sure I saw this in the theater. I was a junior in high school when this came out, so this would have been like right in the wheelhouse and like right around the time that we were going to the movies all the time. And I was right, like, smack dab in the Target demographic for this. Me and my friends, it's weird. I didn't even know until recently. Because Heathers has, like, infiltrated the culture to such an extent that I was actually blown away when I was researching the movie and found out that this was actually a box office flop. It cost $3 million to make it, and it only made $1.1 million back. It didn't start to get its cult following until it came out on VHS yeah, and every everybody minute. rented it and saw yeah. it and realized that that's the thing about movies like this. Dark comedy, black comedy is always a hard sell. Yeah. And I think that the way that they marketed it, that it looked like another teen movie, like in the John Hughes kind of vein. So when people actually saw it, they were kind of horrified. <laughs> Because I liked it though. I did as well. Me and my friends fucking loved this yeah. movie. You're we just about, we like quoted it all the time. You're talking about a movie kind of like Breakfast Club or Pretty in Pink. It's a parody of that. Actually. But it had a serial killer in it, you know, and and everybody was cute in it. Everybody looked good and it had good music and every, and it was it was just the setting was you know it was upper middle class setting you know white people and it was just. That's what you watched back in those well, days. Well, and That's like I said, watched. the guy that wrote it, I love this, and this was another thing that I didn't know. Yeah. So the guy that wrote it, Daniel Waters, this was his first screenplay that he had written. He wrote it when he was 23. and So he was in touch with what was going He on. wrote it, Yeah. and he was the, he's like, this is how pretentious and like full of myself I was when I was 23 when mm -hmm. I wrote this. The original screenplay for this was three hours long. And he wanted Stanley Kubrick to direct it. <laughs> yeah. Which, now I kind of want to see that. Well, because he he justified it by saying, well, Stanley Kubrick did his horror movie. He did his war movie. He did his, you know, he did like every genre. And he's like, he, this would have been his teen movie. Yeah. Well, um, as it happened, obviously, Stanley Kubrick did not direct this movie. Although, like I said, now I kind of want to go to that alternate universe where that happened. But... One of the sequences in Heather's, like the slow motion cafeteria thing, um, they actually put that in there as an homage to Full Metal Jacket because yeah. the guy that wrote this was really into Stanley Kubrick. So now, like I said, I'm really interested to know how millennials and younger react to this movie nowadays. Because to me... Okay, so here the plot of this movie... There are, there's a high school called Westerberg High School, which, yes, was named after Paul Westerberg from The Replacements because Winona Ryder was a big fan of theirs. And so Veronica, played by Winona Ryder, she is kind of the odd man out of this clique of mean girls called the Heathers, and their names are all Heather, Heather Duke, Heather Chandler, and Heather McNamara. They're just your standard you know, high school bitches, uh, yeah. you know, everyone either wants to be them or wants to, you know, but they're like te terrible to everybody. They're just like these horrible cons, you know. Look, I mean? you're asking about what, what you think millennials and Gen <clears throat> Z, you know, what they would think of this. I would think that they kind of like it, but they like it, I think, because it's alien. There is uh, an 80s revival thing going on in music and style and it's... Well, and like that wasn't exactly retro, what I meant, but well, yeah, me, I'll get into it. There's been a revival in, in that, but uh, but the thing is, is that the way we grew up is very different, and I think the school situation and the scene in a high school today is probably very different from what we grew up in. But it was a pre-internet era, and a lot of you know you had to socialize face to face with people back in those days, which it caused a lot of problems. That's what that was, but it was good too. It was rewarding and punishing. That's just. 
where you learned how to deal with people, you know, for the first time it, as young adults in high school. So I don't know, but I, I don't think they'd like this movie in some ways. I was I was curious to see, yeah. so I watched like some you know younger film reviewers, and it was kind of fifty fifty. Like some of them really really loved it, and some of them because of the way that and and some so, critics when this came out um, accused it of making light of suicide and murder, um, you know, school shootings and stuff like that. Now, when this came out, school shootings were not all that common. Um, so that's what I'm thinking now. It's like now that they have, have there have been so many of them in the ensuing years that maybe people, you know, would see this differently or would see the movie as like making light of that. It's not because it's a black comedy. It's parodying, it's parodying the John Hughes thing and it's parodying the attitudes that adults have toward teenagers, uh, toward teenage suicide, toward the cliques, toward everything like that. So, but it's a very vicious satire. And I feel like the only, really the only later movies that were kind of like this, it was Jawbreaker, which came out in the 90s. I can't remember what, Rose McGowan was in that. It was 96, I want to say, maybe it was later. Um, that was kind of a rip off of this. Um, most people will mention Mean Girls from 2004, but Mean Girls is pretty tame. Um, compared to this one. So basically you got your Heathers, your group who also has a Veronica, who's like I said, she, she seems like they imply that they kind of plucked her and like made her one of the Heathers, you know what I mean? But she's still kind of like ambivalent about it because she doesn't like the cruelty they display. So she's, you know, she likes being popular, but in a way she doesn't really like it. So there is uh, this new guy who comes to the school, Jason Dean, also known as JD, uh, who is Christian Slater channeling Jack Nicholson, which he did on purpose. Uh, so that's not like it was an accident or anything. So he comes to the school and basically his first action is these two jocks come over and start teasing him or like bullying him, calling him a fag or whatever. Because he had good hair. Because he had good hair and a nice <laughs> trench coat. And he basically stands up with a gun and shoots both of them. Yeah, it was a Colt Python. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Now, but it, was, it had blanks in it, though. You find out later yeah. that it was blanks. And like I said, I think yeah. that this is the way this kind of plays differently nowadays. Because just the next scene, the girls are like, you know, oh, they should throw his ass in jail. He used a real gun. But then Veronica, when a writer's character, says... Oh, he used blanks. All he did was ruin two pairs of pants, you know, implying that the two jocks shit themselves. So the fact that he doesn't get, I mean, he, I don't think he got suspended or anything like for basically shooting two guys in the face with a blank. It was a different culture. But it was, that's what I'm saying. So it it's had, like, it doesn't yeah. really play the same nowadays as it did back then, yeah, I guess. It's a totally different value system back then. And, you know, it had a, it was a mixed bag. And in, certain, in some ways it was a better time, if you ask me. Uh, at least in my, my personal experience. But like I said, they weren't... I don't feel like this movie is making light of it. Yes, it's a black comedy. Yes, it's a satire. But it's not saying... It's it's not siding with Jason Dean. He's clearly a psychopath. Yeah, but, you know, coming up in high school, you know, fuck, in, in, in Trenton High in, out in Michigan and also a scholar got to Sao Paulo in Brazil, me growing up in, in those high schools, we had dudes like that. There were psychos in fucking school. But well, they, yeah. But they tended to get there better or they left or they went to jail. You had that shit. Yeah. You had that shit. And that well, was you just, have that now. That's what I'm saying. It's a normal part of life. Yeah. And that was part of growing up. And we also had suicides. And you know what? Be, to be honest, we didn't give a shit. We well, didn't give a shit. Well, a girl it, about fucking five lockers down from me killed herself. And, we, and, and the day went on like nothing. The next day we're like, and she killed herself? Oh, one well. of the main things that this movie is poking not necessarily yeah. poking fun of but they're kind of like they're kind of showing how you know all the adults in the school for example like you know what the plot of this movie is if you haven't seen it is that veronica starts hooking up with jason dean because she's like ooh the bad boy thing and they uh she has a fight with heather number one heather chandler who like i said they're frenemies basically um, she has a fight with her and she basically offhand says, you know, I wish she was dead or something like that. And Jason Dean is like, can do. And, uh, so they go to her house the next day. All Veronica initially wants to do is give her something that'll make her puke because, you know, Veronica puked at the party the night before and embarrassed, you know, Heather and like blah, blah, blah. So it's just supposed to be revenge. But Jason Dean instead switches the cups out or doesn't say when Veronica has switched the cups one of the cups has drain cleaner in it and basically the girl dies. So Veronica flips out 
But Jason Dean is like, well, why don't we just like forge a suicide note so it looks like she just chucked, she, you know, she just, you know, chugged drain cleaner and crashed through a glass coffee table. So they basically, you know, forge a suicide note. Now, the weird thing that happens after that is that everyone buys it, but Veronica points out that now Heather Chandler is more popular than she was when she was alive because after she died, because she wrote this really nice note about it's like nobody knew the real me. People think your life is so easy when you're pretty and rich and everything. And so it gave Heather Chandler a soul, like, you know, posthumously. And then it almost comes a kind of thing where people start killing themselves just to be like the cool kids. So that's kind of like, as I said, that's what this is parodying. It's it's like a John Hughes movie, but all of the characters in it are like grotesque, like over, you know what I mean? Like not. Well, you know what's you know what was happening. I remember I was there at the time in high school. You know, it was a few years before this came out, but society hadn't changed much in just yeah. a couple of years. You had a bunch of fucking real touchy-feely fucking people in the teachers' unions that kept fucking talking about suicide and kept fucking harping on it. And most of the students laughed it off. They were just thought they were, you know, basically it was like, oh, fuck them. They're pussies. You know what I mean? We're talking about the teachers. Yeah. So it ended up becoming kind of like... We ridiculed our teachers in our times behind their backs a lot of time. We didn't. Believe well, any, I think they still. Do. We didn't believe anything that they said. <laughs> we didn't accept any of their values. We didn't. We didn't, we didn't give a shit what what they believed, and we had all kinds of stuff going on. And it depends on which high school I'm talking about. In Brazil, those teachers were terrified of the students. They wouldn't get involved. They wouldn't tell them anything, because the Brazilian ones, all their parents were. Powerful, milita- powerful members in the ex in, in the military junta, or, or the fucking dictatorship that just stepped down, or they were in the new democracy that was coming, and they were all gangsters. All right, so they wouldn't say shit to a student. Um, they were servants, basically. That's what teachers were in that school. The in the in the uh, in the school outside of Detroit, it was just a bunch. It, uh, we just didn't believe what they said because, you know, they were... Or we didn't care what they said. It was just kind of this touchy-feely fake... But don't like I do said, drugs, that's kind of like... Yourself. That's, I mean, we just laughed that's at been it. like that like forever. Yeah. It's still like that now. It was like that back then. They didn't know then. what they were talking about. Or um, you they know, treated it, you like they didn't... You didn't know what pot was. You well, yeah, I mean? that's like, what I mean. And that's... and that's out of here, you This know? is kind of parodying that in yeah, this yeah, yeah. movie, too, because they have... A lot of adult figures, like they have um, the one female teacher who's kind of like, she's the art teacher, who's kind of like a hippie. Uh, they call her Miss Flem. And she's kind of one of those, you know, we need to have like all this stuff about, you know, because all these teenagers are hurting and they're all killing themselves and blah, blah, blah. So she needs to have this thing. And so she's kind of the one that they all make fun of. Um, one of my favorite when they're having like the meeting in there and she's like, we have to revel in this moment and we have to have a meeting and everything. And then the principal's like, Call me when the shuttle lands, you know what I mean? Like really bitchy. So it's like, so they have that, but they also have these other kind of like mercenary sort of teachers that he's like, well, now this one that killed us, was she a cheerleader? And they're like, no, that's the other Heather. And he's like, damn, I'd be willing to go a whole day for a cheerleader, like let the students go home. So it's like, they're just showing that all the adults don't really give a shit. It's all just about like optics. Yeah. So that's That's a good way to put it. It was optics even back then. Yeah. So that's what I mean. So, so that's kind of where it's coming from. Yeah. Now, um, as it goes on. So like I said, the Heather number one, uh, gets murdered, but it looks like a suicide. Then, uh, JD decides after the two jocks that initially made fun of him that he kind of like pretended to shoot in the face um, they do some fucked up shit and so he decides he's going to kill them as well he gets Veronica in on it by basically saying and I love this he says uh, he's loading the gun and she's like um, no we're not going to do this like we're not going to kill it you know my Bonnie and Clyde days are over she says and he says do you take German and she said no French and he says these are Ichluga bu- bullets Ikluga means I'm lying. So, but she didn't know that. So he's like, yeah, they just, uh, they're like tranquilizers. They just pierce the skin and makes it looks like, you know, it just knocks them out. It doesn't really kill them. But of course that wasn't, yeah. uh, that wasn't what they did. So basically what they did with the two football players, Kurt and Ram, was that because they were so homophobic, because they were so everyone's a fag, 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 like that, 
they decided after they killed them that they were going to make it look like they killed themselves because it was like a repressed homosexual pact. So yeah. it's like he left like this, made sense to the cops. this bag there. <laughs> yeah. I love that scene. I have to say, I love that scene where they, the cops like find the, the two dead guys, like in their underwear yeah, they're and they're, like in the bag, there's like an issue of stud puppy. In yeah, there. Yeah. <laughs> and then like Christian Slater, like when he's saying all the stuff that he got, he's like, here's the one perfecto thing I picked up mineral water and like yeah. Winona Ryder's like what are you talking about it's yeah. like you know Winona, a lot of people drink mineral water and he's no, like no. yeah but this is Ohio if you don't yeah. have a brewski in your hand you might as well be wearing a dress yeah. so um and that's exactly what the cops think is like oh they shot, water. they yeah, were yeah. fags they yeah. shot each other yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean and then there's that great fucking scene at the funeral where like the two jocks they're like are in the coffins and they have their football helmets out of the footballs and then the dad's crying he's like I love my dead gay son you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's like, it's just, it's terrible, but it's like fucking hilarious. I mean, the yeah. movie, like I said, you have to, you have to understand this is a satire. So it's like, there's going to be some like fucked up shit in it. I remember, remember watching it, you know, fresh out of high school. But really, when you look at the big picture, I was fresh out of high school in 1990. Yeah, but, I was uh, still in high school and I, I graduated. Yeah, in I've been out a couple years, but it still felt like you were in high school, even though you weren't in it anymore. But anyway, um. Uh, you still thought that way a little bit. Uh, I, I just it, the whole thing resonated with me, like those scenes. Me too. I was like, oh yeah, oh God. me too. You know, it was just it was a different era. I mean, nowadays people might get offended, but no, that was the way reality was. In well, like 89. I said, it's a satire. It's yeah. over the top, deliberately it is over top. so. Yeah. Um, you know, like I said, it's almost a grotesque like parody of like high school. Yeah, so, but like, your reaction to it, but. Was, yeah, the way, the way. because everybody can relate, especially yeah. people that have been picked on, um, you know, because I didn't particularly like jocks or anything like that in school either. Yeah. So you could you could see getting sucked into this kind of thing, like with JD and like killing these people and being like, oh, it's worth it. But at heart, I mean, Veronica eventually like realizes, hey, this dude's a psychopath and it's like, I have to like, you know, break this up. I have to stop him. So it's almost saying that even though JD's character is supposedly um you know all these clicks and they're you know it he's basically like saying that's evil and i'm gonna fix it but he's just as bad if not worse than they are because he's actually killing people um you know and saying that he's like an edgelord basically is uh yeah. he's he's a very early like edgelord prototype um but y but you can see how like his character is very alluring at the beginning because he's taken out the people that you want taken out because that you feel like they deserve it but like i said in the end it seems like he's like worse than they are because he at the end basically you know spoiler alert yeah. he wants to blow up the whole school he yeah. like puts bombs it's like in the some out of but yeah, yeah, he's got he's got a high level of charisma, and charisma right. can get you through a lot for a long right. time before people realize, wait, this motherfucker's dangerous, you know. Well, yeah, and, that's exactly what yeah. this movie is and, talking about, and uh, just you know, in a funny way. If you go back and watch those two those two fucking Columbine <clears throat> kids. If you know the whole story, yeah, they were fucked up, but they had a lot of charisma themselves too. They yeah, were, you know. Um, they felt they were being, it was vengeance, you know, they thought they were being yeah, mistreated. Yeah, and that's, yeah. And they wanted to kill everybody. That's a, that's a fucking way over the top reaction to it. But they're kids, man. They don't fucking know. They don't understand. Yeah. The gravity of, of what they're, of what they're doing. And then by the time they're doing it, it's too late. Yeah. They can't back out. Well, and like I said, that's kind of essentially what, yeah. I mean, I think JD's character in this movie is like a more charismatic version of yeah. one of the Columbine shooters, just because he justified it by saying, you know, they're all, all this power hierarchy in this school and like they're all snotty and they're cruel to everybody. So yeah. they deserve it. Yeah. Um, and then we can kill them and make it look like suicides and we'll get away with it. Yeah. And so... Like I said, for a time, it's almost kind of like you want them to be the he like him to be the hero, but he's not. He's not actually. really. He's but, not. You know, but there's something true about the movie. Yeah. Is that these guys that do this? They're not a lot of times at that age. They're not monstrous. They're just regular people, like the Columbine guys. Had they made it out of high school without doing that mass shooting, eventually they just would have been normal people. It just happened to be they drove each other to it was a synergy they drove each other to do it and then it's too late by the time you start doing it well yeah because the thing but about teenage guys is that they don't this hormonally and they don't really mature until they're like much until, older until and later. then but like if yeah. they did something fucked up when they were a teenager it's too late it's too late then you can't right. fix so it it was almost kind of like a natural disaster where 
Was it a dick move? Yeah, it was a dick move. Uh, big Very time. much a dick move. That's um, that was the understatement yeah. of the century. But they're they're crazy. Yeah, they're under the influence of all yeah. these fucking hormones and fucking. It's a bad environment, or it's people fucking with them, and that's how they exploded into that shit. And they talked each other into it. it took them a long time to do it. Though. Yeah, they talked each other into that. Yeah, and um, it was basically a suicide pack, kamikaze suicide pack. But like I said, had they made it out of high school, within a year or so, they'd have spent normal people. They would have they, just they, probably grown yeah, out of it. Yeah. They'd which have been is, up at the club yeah, hanging out. Which is sad. Yeah. But um, but yeah, so basically, so the end of this movie, like I said, Veronica realizes that she has to stop him from doing what he's doing. Um, she fakes her own suicide to keep him from killing her. And then basically she goes and she finds out like about this plot. He's going to blow up the whole school like during a pep rally. He's planting all these bombs like underneath because his dad's a psychopath too. And his dad like goes and blows up buildings, except he does it legally. Um, yeah. So, so Veronica basically goes to the school and uh, is able to stop him and she saves the entire school. I have to say, and I'll get into this in a minute, but there were a couple of alternate endings, which I kind of wish I could have seen, but I do like the way this ends where she stops him from blowing up the school, but then he essentially straps the bomb onto himself and comes out into the yard and uh, he's going to blow himself up. And she, all she does is just look at him like, yeah, whatever. And she takes out a cigarette and puts it in her mouth. Now this is um, a reference back to a time where after she has discovered that they've actually killed Kurt and Ram, the two football players, she, as punishment, she takes the, you know, the car lighter out and she burns herself. She's like self-harming. And Christian Slater, JD, like at just takes her hand and lights his cigarette with it, like to kind of show his callousness or whatever that, um, that she feels bad about it. So she's showing, Hey, you know, you're going to blow yourself up and I'm just going to see her and light my cigarette off it. So how do you like it? So I kind of like that ending. Now the originally though, there were two different alternate endings for this. Uh, in one of the endings, the, the ending that was actually supposed to be in the movie was that JD was actually going to succeed in blowing up the school and everyone was going to die. And then they were all, and then there was going to be a final scene of all of the students in heaven and they were finally all getting along. Like all the different cliques were getting along, but they were all dead. Uh, the other alternate ending was... Um, was Martha Dunstock, known as Martha Dump Truck in the movie, like the, the very large uh, obese woman. She was actually going to stab Veronica to death and was, she was going to stab her and um, then she was going to call her Heather. And I think the last line of the movie was Veronica saying, my name's not Heather, you bitch. So uh, I like both of those endings, but actually I really like the way they ended it where she kind of, she saved everybody, but also like JD blew himself up. Now... Um, as I said, this movie, when it came out, I was a junior in high school. Me and my friends fucking adored it. We didn't really realize that it didn't do that well at the box office. Like I said, it's not that unusual for black comedies. They're a very hard sell. A lot of people don't like them. Um, but over the years, like, you know, on the rental, it like really ended up making a lot of money. And then it seeped so much into the public consciousness that the slang that's in it, which... Uh, was mostly made up because the guy that wrote the screenplay was like, well, I don't want to put, you know, current slang in it because it'll date the movie. So I basically want to make up my own, you know, the, my own way that they talk. So then that way it can't be like placed in a certain time period. So, you know, stuff like saying, oh, it's so very, um, you know, fuck me gently with a chainsaw, like all the kind of stuff that they said um, was basically like, you know, made up or he just took it from like people that he knew. And I read somewhere, maybe it was on the Wikipedia page, that this movie is so quotable and all the shit that was in it like seeped so much into the ver public vernacular that this is actually one of the most cited films in the Oxford English Dictionary. <laughs> Just because it added like so many words and phrases like to... To slang, right. which, like, that fucking kills me. I think it's an important movie. Just it because, is. Just because it's like a snapshot in time of the thinking of the very late 80s. It, very late 80s, early 90s. That was kind of the gestalt of the time. You know what I mean? Uh, at least for, from the point of view of a teenager or some, a person in their early 20s. It's, uh, it's a good peer. It's a good look into the psychology of the time, I think. And honestly, I still I just watched it a couple weeks ago, and it's still funny as hell to yeah, me. It's funny, yeah. I mean, like I said, it is 
probably the darkest high school satire I've ever seen. The only other one that comes close is maybe Election with Reese Witherspoon, I think, was in it. Yeah. Um, that was pretty dark, too. But this one's pretty dark. Like I said, it's a, like fucking murder, suicide, like all kind of shit they made. For the bulimia. There's like all yeah. kind of shit in it they're making fun of. I don't think there'll ever be a movie like this made again. It's a, it's a high quality movie. It's shot very well. It's got really good uh, uh, music in it. But it's so offbeat. You know what I mean? You're never going to have topics like this and scenes like this merged with this type of high quality. I don't think they'll do it again. I mean, they made... Okay, there was an off-Broadway version of this uh, that came out in 2010 and ran for several years, which I've heard was actually very good. Um, and there was actually a song in it called I Love My Dead Gay Son, which I thought was hilarious. They also did a series based on it. Um, starting in 2014, 2016, I want to say. I'm not sure if it's still on. Um, it was kind of controversial when it came out. It was, like, delayed because, like, um, it was the Parkland shooting or Stoneman Douglas or something like that. Um, when that shooting, they had, kind of had to delay it because they were like, oh, it's like sensitive material or whatever. But I think it did subsequently come out. I've heard mixed reviews of it. Some people really like it. Some people didn't like it. The writer actually said he thought it was a little weird for the first four episodes, but then it got, like, a lot better. So, like I said, this is still pretty culturally relevant. Um, I found it a bunch of, like, cool fucking shit about this. So, Winona Ryder, who, for some reason, I thought she was older than high school age when I saw this movie. No, but she's, she's not. Kid. She's 16. Yeah, she's a kid. Yeah. She was 15 or 16 when she yeah. made this movie. Cute as a bug, too. She wanted yeah. this role yeah. so bad. Yeah. And yeah. so, she basically went to the writer and was like, please, please, please let me be in this movie. And originally, they didn't want her to be the lead because they thought she, quote, unquote, wasn't pretty enough crazy well because i guess they wanted like the heathers they wanted them to look like all because all the other ones were kind of blonde or shannon doherty yeah. was in it and she was kind of redheaded they were all just these beautiful wealthy kind of there's and, probably more to it than that well probably. they thought well I, she said i looked like a like gothy and you know what i mean because beetlejuice yeah. came out like right around the same time or the year before yeah and um so she went and got a makeover and then they finally gave it to her and she said she said they wanted Jennifer Connelly, actually, oh, okay. is who they wanted. Or Justine Bateman. Uh, those were the those were the two that were in the running. Wouldn't have been the same movie. I don't think it would have been the same. And and I think that the writer and the director, like, after it came out, they were just like, Winona brought something to it that was just kind of like one of those happy accents. Like, we don't want her initially, but then when she was in it. And Winona Ryder said that when she was, like, she was begging to be in this movie, her agent said... She said, my agent got down on her knees and said, please do not do this movie. You will never work again. Bullshit. And that's, yeah, yeah. that's not how it turned out. Right. Um, but it's funny how many actresses turned down this movie for various reasons. Because I think one of the, um, Heather Chandler, Heather number one, the part of that, they originally wanted that to go to Heather Graham. Um, but Heather Graham was only 17 at the time. And her parents would not let her be in it because they read the script and they're just like, oh no, she yeah. is not doing that. And the weird thing is that Heather Graham, a few years later, played a porn star in Boogie Nights. Yeah. She was Roller Girl. <laughs> and it's like, but her parents were still like under because she was a minor. Right. Um, and the funny t thing too is that Shannon Doherty is in this and this was pre-90210. I think it was like a year or two before. But Shannon Doherty had been working in TV since she was a little kid. So she was like kind of a pro. Now, she would not say any swear words in this. Like, cause some of the lines in this, like, fuck me gently with a chainsaw, she was supposed to say that, but she wouldn't say it, so they had to give it to another character. And the funny thing about this, this is what, how the story goes, is that she didn't actually know that this was a black comedy until hmm. she, she watched it afterward, and she was really upset. She thought it was a drama. Mm. But the director thought that was really funny because they're like, we liked that she played it straight the whole time. Like, you know, she wasn't trying to be funny. She wasn't trying to be in a comedy. So she played it like in a very straight way. And we think it came out like a lot better. But apparently, I think she's over it now. But she kind of, uh, you know, she she didn't know that it's that's a weird the kind movie. of movie I that liked she was it. in. I don't think there'll ever be another movie really kind of like this uh, in terms of like, with, like I said, with the quality. You probably would see something that was like uh an indie film would be like this but the, yeah but this doesn't have an indie film uh, film feel at all it feels like it's like a, a john hughes movie a, except a much I'm not more sure. fucked up surreal version for me it was just like a mainstream american movie yeah and uh but it was a highly subversive and it was yeah. subversive then probably even more subversive now i mean it's not pc no. Well, and like I said, I think the closest 
movie to it more recently was Mean Girls. And Mean Girls is pretty tame compared to this one. Um, But as I said, they did do like an off-Broadway play. They did do a series based on this that was, you know, that had a lot of the same shit in it. So it's like they do kind of have a thing. It kind of had some action at the end too with the whole bomb thing and everything. You know, it was, it's not just like a teen comedy. It is, but it isn't. It's just, it's weird. But yeah, like I said, it's a very it's, it's one weird. of it's one of the most vicious satires I've ever seen, and yeah. also and it also has like some surrealism in it too. Yeah, you know what I mean, which I think is kind of cool. Now, one like sad thing the the woman that played um, Heather Chandler, Heather Number One, Kim Walker. Now she was actually dating Christian Slater at the time that they were filming this movie, although they broke up later. Do you want to hear something fucked up? I don't know if you guys know this or not, but you know how she has the line in the movie where she asks uh, Heather Heather Duke, Shannon Doherty's character, did you have a brain tumor for breakfast? Well, guess, lo- guess what? Kim Walker died of a brain tumor when she was 32 years hmm. old. Damn. Isn't that fucked up? And it's like, I don't know, that just like creeped me out for some reason. Yeah. I didn't even realize that she was dead. Hmm. And she, you know... That, I don't know. Too, that's, no. yeah. yeah. Well, it's weird because my... Well, we know one that died of a brain tumor about that age. My uncle died of a brain tumor yeah. at that age. Isn't yeah. that strange? What, what was that when girl? Was Gen- what was her name? Jennifer? What was the the one that... Yeah, We Jen. knew from the club. Jenny. Yeah. That was her she name. Was, no, she was 29. She was 29. 28, 29. Yeah, she was healthy and t- talking and yeah. hanging out with us. And then like a couple weeks later, she died. Yeah. That's, that was weird. It's really freaky. Yeah, weird. That's, yeah, really sad. And evidently, they knew about it. They knew that that was in there. Yeah. They didn't take it out for some reason. Well, maybe they couldn't. Maybe they couldn't. Yeah. Because some of them are like so deep in there that it's right. like, you, you know, there's no way to get it out. Because yeah, like I said, it, that's what happened to my uncle as well. Right. Like they just couldn't get to it. But yeah, it's like if you, if you like teen comedies, but with, <laughs> that is like with an edge and probably the biggest edge of any teen comedy. Like I said, election comes close, but it's not quite as vicious as this one but i think that's what made it like really really funny to me like i just i love this movie i could watch it every day for the rest of my life and never oh, get shit. bored of it i could I it's one it. it's one of those movies where and, and I, like i said i think i have it memorized at this point like all the fucking lines in it and everything because i've seen it so many times but it's just it's a fucking classic and if you haven't seen it you definitely definitely should and if you're younger i'd be curious like what you think about it if you've seen it or if you go watch it and then it's, it's on shutter now i think and it might be some other places too but yeah go check it out and tell me what you think <laughs> and we'll see you on the next one bye